So listen carefully. Uh, it says that, that, yeah, the main theme of everything the Holy Spirit does is to help you grow up into Christ in all things. Now, that's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Now, growth is absolutely necessary, but not always fun. Why? Because growth means change. Change is sometimes a little painful, okay? Uh, correction is sometimes received as something painful, but it is necessary. Now, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 says, And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. Now, remember, because what I was talking about just now is that there are times, okay, when you stand on this platform, this particular platform, you can speak to the people that are here, but especially if it's like a Sunday morning, then you're speaking to the people here and people around the world, right? Now, there are some things that need to be spoken that, that the world can hear, but needs to be spoken to this congregation, right? Because of certain things that we're doing or moving on or something like that. But you have to discern between the two of what to say and how to say it, whether it's directed to the people here or to the people in general. Now, you should never say anything that the people in general can't hear. You, you get that? But there are times whenever you have to be very specific for the church here. Okay? Now, so, again, he's just said, uh, don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Now, the chastening of the Lord is training. It is discipline. It's correction, right? It's not sickness and disease, okay? Mainly because our, well, it says right here, I'll just read this first. Uh, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastens not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers. Everybody gets chastised, all right? Then you are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much more rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily, they, father of our flesh, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for, is for our profit. You understand? If he corrects you, it's for your benefit. That we might be partakers of his holiness. Wow. Notice, you have to be chastised and corrected to be a partaker of God's holiness. And without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Now, now no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised by, thereby. In other words, now that talks about, it goes into being having your senses exercised to discern, okay? So you're trained by God. Now, how does God train us? He doesn't train us. He doesn't correct us by sickness or disease. He corrects us and trains us by his word. Why? Why didn't he correct us by our flesh? Uh, because he's not the God of the flesh. He's the father of spirits. So he deals with our spirits. And here the writer of Hebrews makes it very clear of the distinction between fathers who chastise the flesh and the Father who chastises us by the Spirit, all right? So don't think of, well, I'm being chastised or corrected with this sickness or disease. That's not how he does it. He does it through his word, okay? His word is the rod and staff, and he does not spare the rod, the word, to correct you, right? Remember all this. Now, if 